AN fittings. What are they? Why do you need them? What do you use them for? Chances are the reason you're here is if you're not a normal subscriber, you're interested in using AN fittings for a project or just trying to figure out how they work. Follow me through this little project and hopefully I can teach you a little something about them. been sitting up on stands in the rear like this in this condition for quite a while as you saw in my last video 10 minutes after I started the van with the new j32 swap in it um, had my car running to go grab some fluids right there in the driveway and it just died out of nowhere I initially thought it was my main relay swapped it out with another one I was not getting any fuel pump sound so I assumed at that point, after checking a couple other little things, it was probably my fuel pump. So I pulled the tank. As I pulled the tank, I saw that my fuel pump, I have a Walbro 255 that I've got from a friend. Soldering job on that was a terrible job. So I pulled all of that out, put a brand new pigtail on it. I thought that might be my issue, like it was shorting out. Put everything back in, didn't fix it. I realized I wasn't getting dash lights. Come to find out after pulling the tank and putting it back in several times, I finally found a fuse under my dash that seems completely unrelated. I forgot what it was. The 10 amp fuse, um, that brought my fuel light back on. But in the meantime, um, this was the main fuel line that I had that went to a banjo bolt right here. And then that came over this way, changed to a flexible line, and then went down to a nut underneath the car. That was my main fuel delivery line. Well, when it's been on there for 30 years, and I finally cracked that nut apart, the seal completely broke on it. Let's go ahead and convert that to AN style fittings. Summit. All these little fittings. So this is the original factory line that's a mixture of hard line and soft line. Um, you can't buy replacements for these anymore. This is my Dash 6 steel braided line. I'll go through all of these fittings to build the line. This is your adapted Honda 12mm by 1.25 thread pitch banjo bolt. You can use your factory banjo bolt. It's also going to come with new washers. This is your Dash 6 hose ends, one for each end. I'll need Dash 5 nut and sleeve. The sleeve drops into the nut just like that. This is a Dash 6 to Dash 5 reducer. When you get this steel braided line, it tends to be cut and crimped at the end. Then they wrap it in tape to keep it from fraying. But we do need to get the end cut off so that it's nice and round and not crimped anymore. So it will fit inside the hose ends. The best way to do this is grab some tape. Go around it just to keep all of that steel braided line from fraying as you cut it. Once you've got both ends taped like this, the best way I've found is to just grab an angle grinder and grind it off. Don't forget some safety glasses. You can leave the tape on the end of these, but it's typically a pretty tight fit, so I suggest taking it off. Now we're going to take these hose ends apart like this. The end of it will just unscrew. So you'll take the larger part and you will sort of twist as you put pressure on to get it inside that hose end. It does have a ribbed interior to help hold it in, so it does take some twisting and pressure. It is really important to make sure it's seated all the way up against the inside flange like this. Then you're going to take your long slender piece, put it in. It does take some pressure to get down to the threads because it is compressing that hose up against the ribbed inside of the hose end. Once you get a hold of some threads, go ahead and 
thread it as far as you can by hand. Then you're going to need to grab a couple wrenches and tighten that thing down pretty snug inside there. This is all that's going to create that seal to hold all of your fuel pressure in. As you can see, nice and snug. I can't pull it out at this point. That one's done. Now we can thread our banjo bolt directly into that dash six hose end. And this is what the AN style replacement looks like next to the factory line. Now you want to make sure you've got one washer on your banjo bolt, slide it right through that fitting, and you'll put a washer on the bottom side to create that seal. And we're going to repeat the process for the other side. Go ahead and install the hose end on the opposite side as well. We're going to make sure our sleeve is inside our nut, and we're going to thread that on to the dash 5 side of our reducer, already threaded into the hose end. The other side of that would essentially already be on the flared factory line of the car. This is a smaller line I had laying around. This is just to show you kind of how it works. What you'll do is slip your sleeve and your nut onto your factory line first before you flare the line. Then you can see here how the nut and sleeve slide down against that flare and that's what creates your seal from your factory line to your new AN line. And the nut essentially just holds the pressure and gives you a way to thread it onto your line. And this is what it looks like all together. Now we just need to do this on the existing hard line that is still on the car. Just so you guys know, if you're dealing with um, a Honda, or at least a CRX like mine, an EF, basically to understand what size AN fittings I needed and stuff, I basically just took this gauge and... My existing fuel line going through the car is 0.3 inches or 7.5 millimeters. And I just looked up some charts on Google. It's basically 5 16ths inch is what that comes out to. And in AN fittings, that's a dash 5. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because you're going to flare the end. And that's uh, what creates the seal. This banjo bolt, that interior is a 12 millimeter size um, by a 1.25 thread pitch and then everything else I'm using is dash six dash five doesn't seem to be nearly as common as dash six as a size so it was easier to find uh, actual dash six line and the fittings are a lot more common so that's why I stepped it up to that we are 12 millimeter by 1.25 thread pitch banjo bolt to a dash six hose end dash six line all the way over to another dash six hose end onto a dash five to a dash six male to male adapter you could call it a union but i think technically because each side is different size it's not called a union we go to a dash five which will go to my existing fuel line on the car now you're going to want to use um, some kind of pipe cutter like this to get a nice clean cut um, what you do is just put it around your line and it rides in these two wheels and then you tighten it down spin it around tighten it down more just keep going with that process until it um, finally breaks off and you got a nice clean clean line there the thing that makes all of this work is the 37 degree flare tool um, this is a rigid brand i think this is the same brand that i used for all my brake lines and when i converted my fuel lines inside the bay so i'm going to do a couple test flares here this line is actually smaller than what I have on the car. This is leftover brake line from when I did my brake tuck. I don't remember exactly what size this is. Let's go ahead and cut this line. Get a nice clean cut on here. And there it is. Might want to use a file or something just to kind of clean up the edges just a little. At this point, what we're going to do, you want to stick it in about flush, a tiny bit above the surface. That's why I'm doing some test runs with this before I actually get it wrong on the line on my car. We're going to move this thing over and line it up right here. And tighten it down pretty good because when you push down on the flare tool, you don't want it to push that line out at all. Then you might look inside just to make sure it's lining up and then you're just going to sit here and twist and I believe it makes a pop or something when it's done. There it went. It broke over. So then loosen this up. 
Take that back out. That is not an example of a good flare. So having the line flush with the flare tool seemed to work best for me. Moving over to the car, I'm going to cut my factory line. I'm going to cut that factory flare off to be able to remove the factory nut. And there's the factory nut that wouldn't seal anymore. Now we're going to put on our dash 5 nut and sleeve. Push it up as far as you can to have a little more room to work. It is pretty tight trying to get your flare tool up in a place like this, but with some patience it will work. We're going to slide the actual flare tool on, get that tightened into place, make sure you're exactly where it needs to be. And then you can go ahead and tighten it down and create the flare. Once that's finished, we'll back it off. And now I'm just trying to connect the new line into the sending unit. It's a pretty tight space to get to, so it's a lot easier if you can leave the tank dropped. And right there is where it threads into the sending unit. Now I can lift the tank back up into place, tighten my straps, and at this point I can connect my hose end into the dash six side of my reducer. Make sure it seats tight by hand and then go ahead and use a wrench to get it all the way tight. There is the finished line. Let's go put some fuel pressure to it. I'll check for leaks and if I don't have any leaks then we'll crank her over and see if she'll start. The car hasn't started in three weeks to a month. Here we go. Cycled the fuel pump a few times, checking for leaks, check for any wetness, nothing there, it's on top of the tank. Boy, that's looking pretty good. Last time I did that, it spewed fuel everywhere. I don't see why the car won't start. Let's give it a shot. together but I put a ton of work into this video in hopes that it would help some people out whether you were just curious about how AN fittings work or if my video helped you work your way through using AN fittings to help you fix whatever it is you're working on please go ahead and hit that like button consider subscribing to the channel and please take some time to watch some other videos on my channel it, it really helps me out and it helps me to keep pushing content like this to you guys i wish there were more videos like this back when i was building my car an fittings can apply to all different types of vehicles it is a universal system it's not cheap by any means but it's a great alternative over your factory stuff and they are reusable which is great i'm no expert by any means but if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment and i will do my best to answer them good luck and as always thanks for watching say bye bye, bye, -bye. What?